Edo? Um, as always, you can use the Q&A button to uh, make and raise uh, questions. Uh, we can answer them maybe directly by on the chat, but uh, if it's possible also at the end of this uh, live session. Um, and here, I would like to share with you uh, the agenda for today. So basically, um, we're gonna have um, the first speaker of today is uh, Jacopo Sala, and Jacopo is part of the European Youth Energy Network, and is gonna tell you um, how to uh, deliver a great presentation and video pitch. So he's gonna provide some some suggestions, some tips for you to produce uh, an engaging presentation and engaging uh, video pitch. Then after Jacopo, it's the it's time for Dimitri uh, to uh, talk about the importance of scope of scope and focus and gearing up for, for innovation. And then it's my, my turn to uh, explain a little bit more, uh, for example, how to uh, deliver the, 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 uh, the, the submission uh, for this hackathon, where to find the templates, uh, how to do that, how to de deliver the, the code, for example, how to deliver the presentation. Uh, I'm gonna explain you how to interact with the, with the mentors, so how to contact them to communicate during the, the three-day hackathon. And also at the end, uh, how to receive uh, support for each challenge. So as you know, uh, this challenge has um, four topics and seven challenges. So basically we have set up a dedicated uh, channel for each one of the challenges. And I'm gonna explain to you how to, to leverage those channels. And then at the end, we're gonna have the, um, the Q&A sessions as always. So here's the time to um, leave the floor to, to Jacobo. Yeah, you're going to give us uh, um, the presentation on how to deliver a great video pitch and also the uh, deliverable number two, which is the presentation. So, Jacopo, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, so, yeah, today I will focus mostly on uh, telling you a few uh, ideas and a few points about how to pitch your idea. I'm quite sure that you have already had the chances to pitch ideas in your life and you already know uh, some of these things. Uh, but it is a very good reminder that to have in order to uh, not forget the point of what you're trying to do with your pitch. Uh, I will not dive into the presentation too much uh, and, and the one that you have to deliver because the ideas are very similar. You have to be always concise and you have to be uh, careful that what you write is going to be delivered to the person and that it has a, a complete flow of information. However, for the pitch, there are few more things that needs to be taken into consideration. For example, um, needs to be taken into consideration. So first of all, what is really the elevator pitch? Well, the image that you usually have is that you enter an, uh, in an elevator and you have to pitch your idea in a very short time to somebody that has more power that can sponsor your idea and that can bring it to uh, reality or maybe a partner, for example. But imagine the following uh, in this case, you have uh, your idea, in, in your incredible idea in your head and you can wait to realize it. And you really believe that it's uh, something that will benefit the company or the world. And also your boss is currently taking a break at the coffee machine. He has little time and he's there mostly to relax. So what do you do? Well, many cases you just start talking, 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 and you never reach the point. So this is what you really have to avoid. You don't have to talk just to explain your idea, uh, but you have to convince them that your idea is worth pursuing and to invest into. So how do you uh, achieve this? Well, the most important thing is that you prepare in advance and that you mostly prepare the content in advance. And here's where your presentation as well, the written one will be very helpful for setting up the content for the pitch. So think properly about your idea. What is really relevant to be mentioned? Like ask yourself questions like, uh, how can you properly explain what is the value behind your idea? What is the key angle or perspective that your idea is bringing into the table that nobody has thought about and that makes it stand out? Also, why it is such a good idea because to um, that the other person in front of you must spend his own money or time, what he thinks is more worth it for himself on this idea. And most importantly, 
you are trying to convince somebody. So it's not the only important that you adapt your presentation to your own skills and your way of presenting and what you would understand the best, but keep in mind who you have in front. Are you talking to a young person, to a nerd person, uh, to somebody that is already experienced and a professional in the field? Keep this in mind because this is key in order to convey your message across the barrier that there is at the moment between you and the person in front of you. So most importantly, build on all the ACATO material that you create because that is going to be fundamental for you to have an organized way to prepare the content. Most importantly, you have to submit a video pitch. So on this, remember that it will not be necessarily on real time. So you can even record it and prepare it and edit it uh, before you submit it. So it doesn't need to be perfect on the spot, but you can. You still need to rehearse and retry it so that you can get something that is uh, valuable. But being something offline and something that you can edit, you can also use this to shine and to make your idea more valuable by getting creative, uh, getting creative, putting something that nobody has thought about in order to convey better your message or to showcase your idea in a better way. But don't overdo this. Keep it still simple and stupid. Kiss it. And understand your audience, as I was saying before. Is your video too much for young people, too much for old people? Or what is the kind of communication you're trying to deliver with it? Keep this in mind when you prepare your video. And last but not least, uh, it is a pitch. It is something that has to go straight to the point and it has to be short. So you don't have time to lose. And therefore, it's always good to have a good structure so that you can go straight to the point and be the most impactful possible. Most of the time, this is created through a three section uh, part of for your pitch. First of all, the hook where you lis your listener gets your attention. That is the moment when he decides between listening to you or, play or playing video games on his phone. So once you hook the person, shortly explain a bit the value of your idea, what it consists on, and why it's important uh, that the person uh, jumps on board. And last but not least, be careful that you have a conclusion and that you action what you are saying into something that the other person can do for you and can help you with. Diving a little bit more into these parts. Uh, so what is really important in order to build a real uh, pitch that is very effective? First of all, the hook, as I said, is where you explain a bit the problem. And here, psychology and sociology usually comes into place where you have to understand the person in front of you and in most of the cases, people love trivia, they love stories, and they love something that is quite simple. So common options here are, for example, to start with a simple question that showcases some data that can open the eye of the listener into a problem that they didn't thought it was a reality before. Or you can have a second option that instead tends to drag the listener uh, into a problem and try to uh, explain to them uh, the environment or the situation that is uncomfortable. And in this way, uh, explain then the solution and how to get out from that discomfort. You can a bit think about as a superhero story as well, where things are always going uh, good in the first five, 10 minutes of a movie. Think about Marvel or DC Comics, whatever you like, but this kind of movies, for example, uh, something is going good, but then something goes terribly wrong. Everything seems very bad. Everything uh, seems to be the sup uh, super uh, impossible to go over. But then the hero comes in, brings the team together, and finds a way to solve the issue that is uh, happening at the moment. A third way instead to think about this is also that you can kind of structure everything in the why, how, and what. So you can start uh, with the why to build up an emotional attachment to your solution so that the people get hooked into the, uh, into the idea and uh, create a kind of a, feel, a good feeling uh, towards your idea. The second one is the taxi. Here you can see a picture probably that you might have seen from the pursuit of happiness where uh, Will Smith was trying to get a job and he had only the time of the taxi to be able to explain why he was the person uh, to be uh, included in the program uh, he participated in. And this is exactly what happens for you. You have a limited amount of time where you have to deliver all the information that you have to deliver to the person and convince them as well. So connected to the superhero story, this is the moment where you come in and you say, we are here to save the day 
And here is how are we going to do it? So consider here the questions that you also have to deliver for the presentation. What do you do? For whom is this thing, this solution that you're bringing to, uh, to reality? What makes your idea the most valuable with a key uh, with a key angle and a perspective that nobody else has done? And also, how are you going to make it reality? What is kind of the timeline milestones that you're thinking about? And why this is maybe faster than other solution, depending on what is your key perspective. So build on the hook. And this is really the time for your idea to shine. And be fluid and coherent in your speech. Use poses and white spaces to make a point, to build climax, for example. So pitch it as well to a friend or somebody that doesn't know too much about your solution. Does he understand everything what you're, or what you're saying? There is something that creates confusion. There is something that you should explain in a different way uh, to be more effective. Try to have this kind of approach to fail many times, but fail fast and be able to solve the issues as soon as possible. And also try not to read as much as possible because if you read, it can be not only seen, but it can also be understood uh, from the speech that you're giving and by the intonation of your voice and the feelings that you kind of tend to transmit uh, to the people on the other side of the screen. And if you can make your images speak, they usually help a lot and they are very supportive of your, uh, of your pitch itself. And in the case of a video pitch, you can also add this to the video itself. So try to be inventive on this and it could, bring you your solution to a higher level of presentation. And last but not the least, it's time to close the deal. You, in order to close the deal, this is the point where you become memorable. This is the last part of the pitch where the person might not have understood everything, but here is where you really, you will really remember what you're talking about and what your idea is about. So you should be now at the apex of your story climax. So try to uh, bring to the point, what is the most important concept that you want the listener to remember? And if possible, try to do this returning to a concept that you said before, so that uh, maybe it was kind of a detail the person didn't pay too much attention to, but now you can mention it again, and this will bring the person to remember all your pitch. This is kind of a technique that in a kind of a circular way uh, is used in some pitches or in some uh, educational content uh, to stick uh, something in the head of the listener. And most importantly, as I said before, make it actionable and try to create a way for the follow-up or at least for a way to the person to say, yes, I want to be on board with your solution. So thank you very much uh, for listening. And uh, I will give back the word now to Michaela. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jacopo. So uh, yes, basically, if you have any question to Jacopo, you can uh, write it down in the Q&A section mm -hmm. and we're going to answer uh, by chat or also live uh, at the end. Uh, not a problem. And then here, uh, now it's time to uh, give the word to um, Dimitri Schurman and is going to talk about uh, the importance of scopus, uh, scope and focus and gearing up for, uh, for innovation. So Dimitri, the, the floor is yours and you're welcome. Yes, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I cannot start my video because the host stopped it, so... Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask you to do that right now. You should be able to start the video. Yes, wait, I'm first sharing my slides. Okay. Yes, we can see you and the slides. Okay, perfect. And I'll get on the screen. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Dimitri. Uh, I work for iMac as a manager and I also did a PhD on innovation management in uh, Living Labs. Uh, and I was asked to give a presentation on uh, innovation management and uh, how to uh, structure your innovation process. And because in a hackathon, it's all you can also follow a certain process in order to improve uh, your ID and to improve the inputs yeah, and to be really focused and scoped towards uh, towards one goal. Yeah, and that will also help you uh, with uh, what the previous speaker said uh, with, with, the, with the pitch, uh, with the video pitch, yeah, because if you really have focus, you have scope, you have uh, a, a, a specific problem and the user base, then it's much easier to really uh, create stuff that you will do with the hackathon, with all these data sources, with all these platforms that you can work towards uh, concrete. 
So let me start first uh, with uh, a quote, a quote by Michael Dell. It is also the guy uh, who created the company that delivered the, the, the laptop, which I'm presenting on right now. Uh, and he said that IDs are the monopoly of execution of them as not as they were. Indeed, there's a millions uh, of IDs. And also uh, branched to your IDs that you have submitted on uh, the website. So there's a lot of IDs, but really how to execute on them. This is key, eh? and if you do good execution, then a good ID can become a brilliant project or a brilliant company. Sorry, sorry, Dimitri. I think that um, the microphone is not working properly. I mean, we can hear you, but it was really, really great at the beginning. Now it seems that it's going away. Okay, I will be a little bit more closer. To uh, is it better like yeah, this? It's perfect. Yeah, thanks. Okay, okay. Thank I much. will be a little bit closer. Uh, so what is innovation man management? Uh, so innovation management is about a process and on how you will uh, organize your innovation procedures. Eh? So you have the initial stage of ideation and there's where you are right now. And you're thinking about ideas, you're thinking about opportunities, but then have some kind of a process to arrive at some point towards successful implementation. And it's all about decisions that you make, activities, practices, and really implementing an innovation strategy. And as a hackathon team, I would say already try to be a little bit in this mindset. They take this as a project that you structure and where you potentially can become maybe an entrepreneurial team or that something really big can get out of what you are doing in this hackathon. The three main elements, uh, and, and uh, I would say how to arrive really at the sweet spot of innovative data-driven solutions and because also work uh, a lot on data-driven solutions is uh, that you take into account these three elements. And the first element is technology, uh, that you have a solution that is technologically feasible and that builds upon the capabilities that you have. And so in the case of the hackathon, this is uh, of course very important that you have uh, a lot of resources, a lot of material, a lot of data, etc. that is made available to you. So there is this technology stack that you will use but how will you use it? And what will you do with it? And what is feasible with it? And this links up with desirability with the people. Uh, the idea is that your solution should answer some kind of need of some user or user group or stakeholder group. And so that you really also that there is a need for the thing that you are developing for your solution. And then uh, last but not least, also that your solution can have a sustainable business model and that there's a fit with the strategic goals that you're having. Yeah? So that it's, for example, uh, that it is affordable for the user group that you are developing for, that the eventual solution will be affordable. So these three elements uh, are crucial within the innovation management process. And then how to structure this process? I think one of the things that most of you have heard about is design thinking and in design thinking, they call it the double diamond because this figure resembles a little bit the double diamond where you start from a problem and you get more and more insights into the problem through the discover stage you then define and you really focus upon the key issue the key problem the key opportunity that you will tackle and only that you start developing potential solutions and you do delivery and again you scope and so it's two times that you first diverge and then you converge uh, but as you see here half of the time you're not working with solution but you're working on the problem and this is something very important that i will deal with you a little bit more uh, further on in uh, the presentation and this double diamond will also return in some of the things that i will be talking about so and these are the three guiding principles that you uh, that i uh, advise you to take into account when you uh, are embarking on this innovation journey. And these are the three elements that I will uh, deal with you uh, a little bit uh, more in depth. The first one is focus. Okay. You should at all costs avoid the Swiss army knife fallacy. What is this fallacy? This means that you are designing a solution that will solve everything. Uh, this is simply not possible that also because there's also an opportunity cost. So the more things that you put into your solution, the more you uh, have resources to spend. So be specific and be focused towards maybe one or two key things that you want to be, that you want to improve and that you really want to solve for a very specific audience. And then you will be able to really deliver your solution. When you are all over the place, it's much harder to really arrive 
at a specific solution that is really uh, in sync with uh, real customer or user needs. Second principle, differentiation. Uh, what is your value proposition? Uh, what will motivate the end users to really eventually adopt your solution? Uh, because if this motivation is not high enough, then simply users will also not adopt your solution. So make sure that you differentiate from the current practices. And then the third principle is coherence. Uh, you have to have a good design. Everything should be right. And uh, you should have uh, a sync with the needs, with the solution. So there should be some consistency in what you are doing and you should design for positive feedback loops in, uh, in your process and in your solution. So how to practically deal with this? First of all, focus. Uh, this famous man, uh, Albert Einstein, he said, if I were given one hour to save the planet, I would spend 59 minutes defining the problem and only one minute resolving it. Okay, so this means really look at the problem it's maybe a bit an over exaggeration but really try to grasp the problem extremely well and that will really help you in making the choices in terms of your uh, solution so basically start from a problem and this is my main message here generate a how might we statement and that statement should include the problem owner the problem itself and some kind of ambition that you really want to realize with this uh, how might we station that would lead to your solution. So I took some examples. So take this also uh, very important and this challenge. At some point, if you arrive with your team with, okay, this is really the how might we challenge that we will be tackling during the hackathon, take this with you, put it on a post-it or I don't know, somewhere that you can see it every day that you're working on. And if you are in doubt, look back to the challenge because this will keep you uh, focused throughout the whole uh, the whole experience and then update it when necessary sometimes you will maybe uh, get new information get new insights and this will mean that you update your harmony challenge but it is something dynamic this will really help you keep uh, focused so an example uh, one of the things that i saw uh, of, of the stuff that has been submitted by the website was uh, what if we could also provide for where to place aquacultural cages to decrease the probability of pollutants reaching them. So my advice here would be, who needs these recommendations? It's not clear here. So be more specific, do some research or get, uh, get to the point that it's that it uh, clear who is the one that will need the recommendations. Why will this need their, this recommendation? What is really the underlying problem? So what uh, will be solved is if they get these recommendations or what issue will it solve and what is the outcome if you succeed? What will it, will it mean? What will maybe increase or what will, will, will get better? Uh, so this is stuff that, that needs reworking, uh, I would say, in this uh, problem statement. Then another, I will not read it uh, completely, uh, but here you see a lot of elements that should be in the how much we stated that are, that, that are here. Uh, so uh, one problem here, Feed the world population. Okay, this is already a very big, let's say, wicked problem. Agricultural farm face risks. So there are risks, and so a link is being made with effect the bigger problem. And then choosing farm locations with high productivity while minimizing risks and environmental impacts is a difficult decision problem. So it's also clear what they want to do and that it is difficult. Uh, and then who? Who experiences this problem? small and large-scale farms and then available tools do not provide synthesized information in an open career and intuitive way again already a link is being made what this user group uses right now uh, so the project will want to increase this set. so this is i would say it's now very long but if you get these elements out of it you can create a very nice how might we statement and for me this is the way to go to really start then uh, the hackathon and then you can really uh, look for all the kinds of solution components and really bring it to a solution that might answer this need. All right, uh, so uh, the problem statement, but also it's not simply about brainstorming, it's also about exploring the problem. And there a technique that you could use, uh, it's a quite simple technique, it's the five whys, uh, that you define the problem and that you ask why five times and by yourself why is something happening why is that why is that why is that so that you drill really to the root cause of the problem and that you really think through okay 
don't take anything for granted. Really have a research mindset and really explore the problem really down, uh, down to the basic and by the root causes. This will really help you to scope and to focus your uh, project. So uh, focus, second element is differentiation that you have now, how might we state it? that has a clear problem, that has a clear user. How will you now differentiate from what is already there? And uh, here I use uh, some material by John T. Gorville. Uh, so he's a psychologist uh, who has worked a lot also on adoption of new technology and of innovations. Uh, and he says, it's not enough for a new product simply to be better, unless the gains far outweigh the losses, consumers will not adopt it. Uh, and he makes the distinction between a current state in which the current users, the current practices and current solutions are active uh, because for a certain problem, there already is happening stuff. Uh, users are experiencing that problem, are practicing or doing things or using maybe other tools to, uh, to try to solve that need and use maybe other solutions. So you need to have a very good insight on what these solutions, what these practices are and who these users are in terms of your future state. And there is a little bit of a bias because the users in the current state, they overweight the current solutions. And because these three psychological effects, the status quo bias, the endowment effect, and the gains and losses, I will not go too much into that. You should read the paper. But these three effects make that the current user base is inclined to stay with the current state. So they overweight the current state with a factor of three, whereas an innovator, is busy with the future state. He's prone to a pro-innovation bias, to a confirmation bias, and to wishful thinking. And they really, and they overweight, in fact, the, the 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 positive effects of the solution also with the factor three. And that's why you should really outperform the current practices and not simply be a little bit better, but be significantly better. And they say there that the the factor nine is what you should aim for. So that your solution at some point outperforms the current solutions with a, a factor nine so that you investigate this current state and then develop a future state that is able to really be significantly better than the current state. That's the idea behind this, uh, this slide. And uh, for some inspiration, uh, this is by Bayer Company, the B2B value pyramid. You also have a B2C one. This can help you. Uh, okay, how, where should I differentiate? What are the elements that I can use? This gives an oversight of where you can make the difference in B2B settings. Also, you can uh, look for the B2C value pyramid as well. Uh, but what are you exactly solving? Uh, is it about social responsibility, growth and development, for example, decreased hassle, time savings, etc.? So this gives you a little bit of inspiration. Where do we want to make the difference with our solution? But this should, of course, be linked to what the current state is all uh, about. So my advice here, in terms of differentiation, try to talk to at least, I would say, problem owners or potential users during the process. At least talk, say that it can be a phone call, it can be a video call, but at some point, spot who is really the problem owner and the potential user of what you are designing and have a talk with them. And you can use this structure and also follows the double diamond. It's turned a bit upside down, yeah, but you introduce yourself. Then you talk about current practices and out of the current practices, what people are doing and using right now, you drill down. Okay, but what is now still lacking or what is going wrong? What are unmet needs and wants? And that really helps you to pinpoint the problem. If you already have ideas about your solution, in the second stage, you can pitch what you are trying to develop what you want to do. And then you can look for answers. You can look uh, what attitude do they have towards the solution? Are they positive, negative? How do they see this? And you can link this with their current practices. Eh? Do you think this would increase and how much? Uh, and then of course you can deduct drivers and barriers. Uh, what is really the added value or what could be the added value of my solution? And this will really help you to uh, get more in sync with, uh, with the end users and with the current practices, but also to uh, fine tune your solution uh, itself. Okay, then we go to the final element and the final element is about coherence. Uh, so in what you are doing, what you are designing, it should be at some point a coherent story uh, that it adds up 
that, uh, and it adds up to everything. And their uh, assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups. Eh? So if you assume stuff, yeah, you can really get it wrong completely. Uh, so instead of assuming, the idea is that you find validation for your assumption. And this is a research that has been done about digital and about hardware innovation, about uh, startups that failed at some point, and that they that they looked for the reasons why these startups failed. And mostly it were it was a mix of reasons. But number one reason why startups fail is that there's no market need. And so you see the link here with desirability. Still, a large part of startups fail because they are not enough in sync with the market need or that they didn't validate it, that they assumed there was a market need, but they got it wrong. Then also pricing costs and run out of cash is more in line with the business and with the viability that at some point you uh, are not able to deliver a sustainable uh, model. And uh, here the third one is also interesting for you, I think, uh, because not the right team. Eh? So it's really important that you have the right team from the start. I saw also on the forum that uh, there was already some action and some activity there. So try to really compose a multidisciplinary team and that you have different angles on the same, uh, on the same issues so that you can really take uh, the, right, the right decisions. Uh, but the main message here is try to avoid assumption or try to be aware of your assumptions and try to validate them. Uh, because this validation in things like the Lean Startup, it, it's completely built out of this process of getting your assumptions and then validating them. Uh, the Lean Validation Board, for example, is a canvas that uh, is used to do exactly that, uh, that you... Uh, map your assumptions, and then you get out of the building to validate them. Disciplined Entrepreneurship, that's a book by Bill. Uh, he was, uh, he, he's the director of the MIT Entrepreneurship Program, and he even designed a complete process of 24 steps that you should take to uh, have a successful startup, but also uh, the, 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 the red line in this, uh, in this book is also the validation of assumptions and getting to know, getting in sync, in sync with your problem and uh, with uh, the problem that you're solving and with the uh, end users. So my tip here is that you, uh, in terms of coherence, that you try to define Success criteria for your most critical assumptions. Yeah, so think about your model, think about your how might we challenge. Okay, what is now uh, an assumption? What is stuff that we know? And regarding your assumptions, test them. And really do this as a team. Eh? As a team, put forward, what is it that you believe? And what is your assumption? How will you verify that? Eh? You can, for example, talk to end users. Uh, you can do some other tests, but measure. When are we successful? When are we right? And this is subjective. This is something that you should agree as a team, but be conscious about it and really have kind of some testing in between. If at first, you will have some uh, assumptions regarding needs. In a second stage, when you have already parts of your solution, you will have some assumptions regarding the solution. Is the solution really better than the current practices? And then be creative and design some of these tests and do this as, as a team. And it will really help you to pinpoint what is the problem and what is it, what is really our addition to this prop to the solution of problem. And it will help you with your video pitch eh? because you can really use this testing uh, results, I would say. You can use them to communicate and to tell them that you are on the right track and the board that you really found something. So, and also a, a very, an other very uh, interesting and uh, handy tool uh, is user story mapping. And to have a coherent innovation story, user story mapping is a very great and visual technique where you really uh, define what you will create and also do it over time. It's a, it's a combination of a user story, uh, of a user story, uh, a user journey, sorry, a user journey. Which journey does a user follow? Uh, in a certain application or in a certain process and then what tasks fall under these different activities and these tasks are then uh, submitted as subtasks within these tasks and they are prioritized what should we build first what should be part of a minimal viable product and what is more nice to have in terms of features so it goes and these user stories they are typically defined as as a user type so again your user type comes in here it all starts and 
with a specific user or target user group or stakeholder group where you are uh, innovating for wants to do a certain action so that uh, something happens a benefit happens. so in this way you get really a holistic view of the product or of the innovation that you are doing it because it has both also uh, user elements but also solution elements in it it has the customer journey in there it also has how the things do relate there because there is a time sequence uh, in this and also what you build first and what is key and the solution and what can come in a, a later stage. So how can you now concretely get started? I would say uh, there's also a workshop that I recorded. Uh, it's online. Uh, I saw some of you already watched it, uh, but I would say follow, uh, check out the workshop and you can follow these nine steps. Uh, I have also put forward these nine concrete steps that you can follow to really create a solution that is really linked to a certain uh, user group, a target group, and you can uh, watch uh, the, the workshop here uh, online via the link and also it's on the on the cloud. Uh, and also, what is very interesting to map, I also already talked about the validation board and also stuff like the business model compass. But I think in terms of really validation at IMEC, we also developed a living lab data canvas, uh, which is referred to also as Innovatrix, which is our online platform, where you map out different elements. And here you see, you map first, what are your main stakeholders or your main users? And per user, you can indicate what are needs this stakeholders or this user group have, what are the current practices, what are tools that they are using, for example, and then what data sets or what models are they using at this moment, what is the jobs to be done, okay. so this refers then to your uh, solution, uh, what is the stuff that your solution should do for this user group, what is the value that is created for this user group, think about the value elements, you can put them in there, and what is the value captured in total, what do we as a society uh, will gain if this solution would be adopted by this user group. You can also add future data sets or future models. If these don't exist yet and should be developed still, you can map them out there. And of course, always think about barriers. This is something that you need to keep in mind from time to time. Be your own devil's advocate. I think what should what could go wrong or what is not coherent in my model. So this canvas can really help you if you want to use these three elements of focus, differentiation, and coherence, put it in this canvas and it, and use it step by step to validate your uh, assumptions. And, and you see also clearly that you have first the current state elements are the top four are about current state, what is already there out there, and the future state is what you are designing, what you are trying to create, or what you are hacking uh, in, uh, in the hackathon days. And to do this, we also have a digital tool that you can use. Uh, so you can click, click this link. And also, I have generated the QR code. If you want to use the canvas, you can use it online. You just have to register. And uh, it's all ready and up for you to use. All right, this was my talk. I don't know if there are any questions right now. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Yeah, I don't uh, see any questions so far, mm. but yeah, we can uh, see if uh, in the end, we're gonna have some, some requests from the participants. Uh, thank you very much for, for your uh, presentation. I would like to also say that uh, you're, you're bringing to the table the design thinking process and, and, and really, really think that uh, design, design process is useful for this kind of, uh, this kind of hackathon. Um, and you mentioned also Einstein, that so you should uh, maybe spend 59 minutes to uh, define the problem and then one for the solution. So our participants, they have, they have one week uh, from now to, to the hackathon. So the hackathon will, will last two days uh, and, and maybe they can use this, this, this week to uh, maybe go on back and forward, diverge and converge uh, on, the, on the two diamonds that, that you mentioned before. So if you guys have, have time, because we know that you guys also have a work uh, to do, you have jobs, 
but um, this is a valuable uh, input from from Dimitri and I would really suggest you if you have time to to go through the the video which is going to be recorded again you're going to have it tomorrow on the info tab on tornado but also to watch the uh, tutorial that Dimitri registered uh, which is already available on on the platform so uh, thank you very much for the uh, for the available uh, presentation Dimitri and we'll see at the end if we have some some other uh, questions all right, so now it's time to, just one second. It's time to talk about um, delivering on deadlines. So here I'm gonna to explain to you uh, where to find the templates and also the guidelines for the submissions of the deliverables. So first of all, I'm going back to uh, Event Tornado. Uh, and here, uh, as you can see, we have produced for you a starter kit. I hope that you already download it. Uh, but there is a new version uh, which we uploaded today. And in this uh, new version, uh, you can see especially um, new information about how to deliver uh, the deliverable number three, which is the code. So I will start on the uh, deliverable one. So here you have the uh, deadline, you have the dates. Uh, you have the definition. So I think that you guys need to read this carefully before starting producing anything in this hackathon. So you have an idea of what you should uh, produce, of course. Um, also, Jacopo before in his presentation, he mentioned uh, these uh, steps. So basically what, who, how, and when. So these are the uh, points that you should address uh, in your presentation. So make sure that these points are really, really well addressed in your presentation. So it's clear to the judges, so they can understand way better what, what your idea is about, what's the, the proposition and so on. Um, and here also, this is very important. Um, if you guys will use the, the, the blue cloud for this hackathon, and then it would be really, really important if you can provide um, a feedback on the usage of uh, blue cloud. And here you have a list of topics uh, on, on which we would like for, to have your, your opinion on. So basically the blue cloud platform user experience, how easy was it to use it? Uh, the virtual labs, uh, same. Uh, data discovery and access services, how, how easy was it for you to discover the data and use it? And also last but not least, very important, uh, the ideas to, to improve blue cloud, because of course you guys are using it, uh, you're putting your hands on it and you guys can understand if there are any area of, of improvement or maybe some recommendations that you would like to share. Uh, the third one is the, uh, is the deliverable number three is the code, the notebook uh, that you should deliver. I'm gonna back to the presentation just one second because you can see more clearly. So here we have added uh, the way in which you should deliver your uh, code. So basically, uh, if you are watching this video later uh, tomorrow, then here you can find uh, all the um, all the steps. So basically, you need to create a deliverable free folder in the Blue Cloud BRE workspace. You have the, the link here. Um, copy the, the notebook file in this new folder that you created. And then you can right click and create a shareable link that you can uh, paste on the uh, My Idea tab on Event Tornado. So basically, how can you do that? If I am uh, a team and I would like to deliver my uh, code, I should go to my idea here. I should click on edit idea. And here we have the deliverable number three code. So here I can paste the code, uh, the, sorry, the link that I generated before that I was talking about. So this is the place for you to deliver the, uh, the, your code. So going back again on, on Event Tornado, uh, here, as I was mentioning, we have all the details. You can find it on the new starter kit, which is, has been uploaded today. So uh, don't worry, you can download it. You can read it there. Uh, if you have any question, you can reach out to me on, on, on Event Tornado for any problem. But also, as I mentioned before, here we also have uh, some things that you should, should consider uh, while developing your code. So there, is, there are some requirements. Uh, there are some uh, recommendations that we provided. Uh, there are also additional points uh, and also some, some useful links and notes that you can, um, that you can uh, watch out. Uh, the last thing about the uh, deliverable number three 
is that if you guys uh, decide to deliver it, then there is also another option to make it uh, public uh, on, uh, on, on the blue cloud. And this option, if you select it, if you make your code public, then we're gonna give you an additional uh, five points for this. So the, the, the overall score of the hackathon is 105. So you can see this five as a cum laude in case you, you get a 100 point from your deliverables. Um, the deliverable number four is the video pitch. Uh, Jacopo already covered everything for me. So the only thing that you should know is that you just have uh, 90 seconds uh, to deliver your, your pitch. Uh, sorry, to produce your pitch. So it must not be longer than 90 seconds. Uh, this is because we have a jury that should evaluate these, uh, these videos. Uh, and the jury is not, we're not gonna give them one week or two weeks to evaluate your, uh, your ideas. So that's why Jacopo emphasized before to the fact that you should go directly to the point uh, and you should uh, understand that your audience are the judges and also that the um, video, the deliverable for is the most important one because it's uh, probably the deliverable that the judges are gonna um, see uh, more uh, more clearly, you know, where they're gonna get most information from. Um, so this uh, this is very important. And a couple of things more about the video. The video, uh, first of all, uh, please do not start uploading it like three minutes before the deadline to deliver it, uh, because it takes time to upload it on YouTube or on your drive or whatever. So there is a chance that. Yes, you start uploading it before the deadline, but then when it's uploaded and ready and you can generate the link, then it's, it's too late to, to paste the link on the Event Tornado platform. Um, and the other thing which is, which is very, very important is that if you create this video, uh, you must, uh, you must uh, share it as public or unlisted because otherwise if it's private, the judges won't be able to, to visualize it course, because only you can, can visualize the video. So this is also another, another important thing. And in case this happens and you forget about it, no worries. We're going to watch all the videos before submitting them to the, to the judges. And we're going to contact you back and ask you to, to make it public. But if you can make uh, things easier for us, that would be great. Um, and then also uh, what I'm explaining right now is also explained on the info tab. You have a video. Um, where you can find all the details on, on how to submit uh, your, your deliverables. Um, and then here, going back again, the My Idea tab is where the, the magic happens. So here is the place for you to upload your uh, page summary here in this space. Uh, the presentation, you can upload it here. In case your presentation is bigger than 20 megabytes, then you can uh, upload it on your drive, make it public or unlisted, and then you can paste the link here uh, and we can visualize it without any problem. Uh, deliver number three, uh, just explain how to, how to deliver it. And then here is the, um, it's, here's where you can say, yes, I want, to, I want my code to be uh, available publicly. So this is where, this yes is gonna give you five points again, additional five points. And this is the place for you to um, submit the, the link of your, your video. So uh, you can uh, put it on YouTube, uh, Cloud Drive, Vimeo, or, or maybe also the Blue Cloud Workspace if you want, and paste the link here. But again, must be public or, or unlisted. Um, and then, so this, is, this should be uh, everything about the, uh, how to submit your, your deliverables. So again, if you have any problem with that, you can, reach out to me on, on Event Tornado, and I'm gonna to explain to you without any problem. Uh, the second point is how to uh, interact with the, with the mentors. So basically, um, you guys um, already submitted your idea and uh, we are currently defining the, the best mentors for you. So when this process ends, which is gonna be uh, by the end of this week, we are gonna add the mentors uh, to your uh, private chat. So if I go back to the Event Tornado, here, for example, my um, private team chat is this one. My team is called Ocean Predictors. And in this place, you will see a message from the, from the mentors introducing himself. 
the name, the expertise, uh, and also a request for you to have a meeting together, to schedule a first meeting to meet your mentor and start talking about the, the ideas that you would like to implement. Um, the mentors are the person which are uh, responsible for the resources, for, for the data, so for everything which is related to the uh, um, blue cloud. But if you guys have any problem to submit your idea, upload your file, some technical problems, whatever, you should refer directly to me uh, because as I said, uh, the mentors are there to help you um, solve your, your problem in terms of, uh, of the deliverables. So basically a um, problem of content of your, of your uh, deliverables. So this is the place for you to contact them. Um, then going back here, we have um, how to receive uh, support uh, for your challenge. So how to leverage the uh, challenge support channels on the, on the event tornado. So again, going back here, you see that we have several uh, support channels. <clears throat> the first one is the Blue Cloud Platform Support which is uh, the um, support channel to uh, register to the Blue Cloud. You have all the uh, uh, details here. Again, it's really important, guys, that you register to the Blue Cloud to participate in this hackathon. If you, if you haven't uh, right now, please go, go on and do it. You can find all the details <clears throat> on the Blue Cloud platform support. Uh, then we have the challenges support. So this is what I would like to talk about right now. Uh, the challenges support uh, are basically um, the support that you receive uh, from the mentors that are assigned to a certain challenge category. So uh, you're going to receive, you're going to have a personal mentor for your team, but also please be aware that in these channels, uh, you're going to receive, uh, you basically have another team of mentors, uh, which, are, which is cross. So you can click on one challenge, for example. I can click on this one. Challenge 1A. So here I can access the Challenge 1A channel. I can see that the mentors providing support for the Challenge 1A are these people. I can click join. And now, as you can see, uh, the Challenge channel appears here and I will be able to chat with them. Uh, to make sure that the mentors receive your request, you can always tag them. For example, if I would like to write a message directly to Brit. Loneville, I can uh, tag her and say, hey, Brit, can you help me with this? And then send. So Brit, we receive a notification like this one, a red one, and it's easier for her to understand that you guys need help. Uh, and this is basically how the, uh, the support will, will work. Then we have the data discovery and access service. We have Paul here helping you. And this chat is dedicated uh, of course, to the support of the uh, Blue Cloud Data Discovery and Access Service, as the names says it. So this is basically um, how the support works. Uh, if you want to get in touch with the organizer, there's also another channel, which is the organizer with Teams. So here, all the teams can access this chat. Drop a message to the organizers in case you have any technical problem. So this is a, a further channel that you have for support. All right. So. Going back to the uh, presentation, again, as I said before, don't, please don't forget to register to Blue Cloud. It's very important. And now I'm going to back to the uh, question and answer and, and, and the chat to see if we have some, some, some questions. So basically, um, uh, Legionare, Julia already answered to this question, but I'm going to uh, tell it to everybody. So if you missed the previous webinars, then you can watch them on the info tab. So Julia already provided the uh, link there in the chat, so you can go there. Um, then Tran and Ngo is gonna is asking what is the correct duration for video pitch? Ninety seconds or sixty seconds? So I don't know, Tran, if you saw sixty, maybe written somewhere, that's a mistake. If if it's if you saw that, please tell it to me that we're gonna correct it. But the video pitch must not be longer than, uh, than 90 seconds. So that's, uh, that's the length of, of the video. And again, that is why it, it must be really short because of the, of the judges. So the judges should see all of your videos and then we cannot have five minutes video. So please stick to that, uh, um, to that uh, length. It's very, very important. 
Uh, Kevin is asking uh, for the presentation, is it mandatory to use blue cloud template for all seven slides? Um, the template is there for you uh, as a guideline. So you have already a base where you can start your presentation from. But if you think that um, you, you want to be creative and you want to change the, the slides a little bit and, and provide another template, which is more clear, which is more engaging, which is more uh, also beautiful uh, to, to, to see, to watch uh, from, from the jury, for example, then yes, feel free to uh, to use another another slide or complement it and, and so on. Uh, but again, as for the video, the video must be maximum 90 seconds and then also the presentation should not be longer than, than seven slides. It happened in the past that, for example, in other hackathons, we had a limit for the presentation, which was already seven slides. And some teams provided um, some presentation of you know, 15 or 14 slides. Uh, which is good in case we have two teams and, and, and one judge, but since we have several teams and the judges cannot read all of your information if you provide very long presentation, then it's really important to stick to seven slides. Uh, so people, can, so jury, the jury can uh, actually read them all. They have the time because we have set up the uh, organization, so they have the time to do that. If you stick to seven, it's it's better. Then. I don't know if we have any other question or maybe hands raised. Let me check. We don't have raised hands. We don't have any other questions. We don't have, this one has already been solved. So if you guys don't, don't have any question, I think that um, everything is explained again. Uh, going back to the tornado, uh, if you can, guys, if you already downloaded the um, starter kit, then please go back here. There is a new version and download it again so you can see how to uh, submit the deliverable number three. I'm going to send also a, a reminder in the event chat uh, so you can, you can remind it about that. Uh, if this is everything, I don't see question. All right, I think that, I don't know, Julia, if we can, if there are some other comments, otherwise I think that we can uh, close here and give back one hour of time uh, to, the, to, the, to the teams. Yes, no, no other special messages on, on my side. Michele, just maybe to again, thank uh, Jacopo and, and Dimitri for their, for their presentations. I hope it was useful for, for everyone. And then, yeah, maybe just a reminder that this is the last week of warm up leading up to the to the Blue Cloud Hackathon. So again, uh, this is your opportunity to uh, play around in Blue Cloud. Make sure that you have all the things that you might need to address your challenge. Uh, some of you have asked for specific libraries that could be useful uh, for your solution. And um, the Blue Cloud team is helping to uh, bring them on board for you. So just make sure that um, you think ahead uh, what is it that you might need for the hackathon so that you, we can make it available to you and it's already once the hackathon kicks off on, on Monday. Uh, also, maybe just to remind you that we have the final or the, the, the last live session of the warm up on Friday. Uh, also a good opportunity for you to raise any uh, outstanding questions that you might have or things that you may want to share before we um, switch off for the weekend and before we uh, kickstart the hackathon on, on Monday next week at 10 a.m. when we will be seeing uh, everyone on, on, a, on a short but hopefully inspiring live session. So um, very much looking forward to uh, support you on anything that you might need this week and um, hope you have a, a great evening. We're very excited by the teams that have formed and the ideas that are that have been shaped so we have really, really uh, good materials, I think, for, for the hackathon. Uh, so congratulations to, to everyone for the preparations and um, looking forward to seeing you this next Friday, or if not, for sure, on, on Monday. Thank you very much to everyone.